All right, everybody, we're here. We're doing this. Um, I got James from, uh, is it is it Grandmaster Facts or is it just the Facts Projects now? Which one is it? Hey, the, Grandmaster Facts is my alias from the Party Nerds. Uh, <laughs> you know, that, that was that was like a, a given name. And uh, the Facts Project is my my brand new podcast. It's, my, it's literally my new project that I started basically, I'd say, two weeks ago. You had, uh, is it two guests so far or three that you had on the show? I am on episode four. Damn, dude. Episode like, four. No, you, you threw it out the gate with like with two two guests right off the bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, generally with, with a with a launch, you got to give them like at least like a few episodes. Of, <laughs> give them like a deal of what you're doing. I like how you look at it. That's cool. Are you liking it so far? You having a good time? I'm always always having a good time with it, man. It's it, it's beautiful to do. I don't mind conversating. Yeah. How long have you been doing this? How long have you been like been like a personality like online? How long have you been uh, putting your name out there? Uh to to be honest, uh, people wouldn't even know because I wasn't even on social media until like two years ago. What? For the first time ever. You've been at it for that long though. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but I I've been on the Party Nerds podcast since two thousand and fifteen, maybe fourteen, fifteen. Damn, so dude. about five years. You've I've been working that hard. Yeah, and, and and then two years later, I finally got the nerve to get social media. <laughs> it, it's working out for you. It seems like the party nerds took care of you. They, uh... Yeah, yeah, you know, they they, they they were the ones that pushed me up there because I, I was totally against it. I was like, I'm not starting this shit. <laughs> I really, really do not want to get deeply driven into the rabbit hole that is the Internet. And it, it will light you back, yeah. Yeah, so so I I, I chose my fate. <laughs> what, what did Cal Reese say in Terminator? There is no fate but what you make. Is that what he yeah. said? Yeah, there's so no fate. There you go. Make it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we got two comic books today. Uh, yes. We got the Dark Multiverse Flashpoint, and we have um, King in Black. Yeah. Uh, considering I haven't read Marvel, you are the person who got me to read Marvel after four years. Everyone who listened to the podcast know why I haven't read Marvel for four years. I know. Uh, yeah. I've heard my little smidgens. Oh, yeah. President Fuckface. There we go. So that's uh -huh. that's why I had to say it just yeah. for those who don't know. But uh, uh, that's absolutely viable. But see, I <laughs> with with the with this with this storyline, with this character, uh, the reason that I gave it to you, because I believe in the character. I believe in Donnie Cates writing uh, Ryan Stegman, uh, Ryan Stegman's art. And pretty much this this character, no has been solidified, I guess, now since 2014. Brand new character. Has it been 14? I thought it was yeah. like 16 or 15. But yeah, okay. Go it was on. Like, it's so, it's yeah. fairly new. Yeah, because, he is. Because you didn't think that there was a lore around the symbiotes. The fans like, like every, that shit, yeah. Every, everybody saw Venom as kind of like, okay, it's a parasitic alien that's attached to a human being. Kind of sounds cheesy. He's uh, only weaknesses are fire and very like high pitched sounds and everything mm -hmm. like that in order to distract it but nothing really like necessarily kills it unless it's like another another symbiote or anything like that and then you then it was like okay there's no backstory on symbiotes whatsoever <laughs> none at all and and then come to find out Donnie Cates writes in this character of how the symbiote started and basically you have this character of Noel of uh, who was there before the universe started floating around until life, which was the celestials at that time actually like intervened and battled him for supremacy within the universe in right. order to start creating life. And, you know, he kind of stood his ground for a little bit, chopped off a killed a celestial in, in, in the meantime, and then basically, you know, uh, ends up in the meantime, getting trapped, uh, trapped inside of like it's his own pr his own self made prison. So that's where he was this entire time. He was he was trapped in a in a self made prison, and he he couldn't garner up the strength to release himself. But you know, small pieces of him were around the universe. That's why you see all the symbiotes. And, right. Like there's different ones: Carnage, Venom. You know, and, like, and they they have kids too, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, they're all basically within the same family. They're they're one sentient being, but they're just different perspectives of it. And and depending on who they attach who they attach to, that's where they garner up the personalities that they have. Gotcha. You know, so but Noel being like the almost like the 
like the cocoon calling out and everything like that to his children that are scattered throughout the universe as far as like what is happening and it, it when i when he first got introduced i was like why hasn't why is it taking so long for <laughs> for this to to happen cuz like this sounds like a very very dope character yeah. that he like created and you know and they still didn't do anything with him they barely gave him like notches of you know for yeah. him to have confrontations with anybody just a couple so, of sit downs in his chair with a sword in his hand right it, yeah. It. So, so it it we're talking yeah six five years later five no. six years later to where he's finally made it to earth and stands up finally yeah yeah he's finally <laughs> made it to earth so it like took for like uh you know storylines like absolute carnage and everything like that i think kate's has been like slowly just like easing his that's way that's kind of how it seems yeah it's kind of yeah. like he's been building up this story like i don't know what to do with this character i don't know what to do with the story but i know i gotta do something with this stuff so, yeah, yeah. And he's finally arrived on Earth. And as you can see from the story, he just starts wreaking havoc. Yeah. Yep. So to talk about the book that you gave me. Um, oh, I, oh, there, there's different layers in this I wanted to touch on. Like, it was, there's, yeah. there's, there's so much nuance. I thought you were just, like, trying to get, like, the bear, the bear conversation out. Like, uh like the, the scene when you, you have uh, Eddie Brock and his kid, like where he's, he's locking the kid inside that chamber and the kid asks him like, like, like dad, please come back. And Eddie looks at him and just says like, I love you, son. Like yeah. you see that. And then like, like it gets builds up when you see the celestial, this is all spoiler guys. It's like, like yeah, it's like, it's like a rush. Like, 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 like it's happening now. Like, yeah. Like, like get in there, go, let's go. We, like we got to get out here. Did, did the Celestial stow you off? Like the Celestial symbiote characters, did that, that throw you off? Did you that expect that? That shit threw me off a lot because I was like, <laughs> for, for one, I know that his formidable foes were the Celestials to begin with. So the fact uh, that he, upon his release, the first the first beings to arrive to like kind of like uh, chariot him into Earth are the Celestials. It's kind of like he got payback on the way. Right. And I was like, "Oh, sh- this is, this is, this is getting super deep." And then, like, then it takes another step because uh, then, then you think to yourself, like, "Okay, Captain America, call out the big dogs." Like, we got, we got Bob. Like, welcome, welcome back, Bob. Like, yeah. you know, not many people like you, but like, I guess that like, you can take care of Noel. We're right ahead. <laughs> and then, yeah, it was and, like the <laughs> unleash the Kraken moment. Pretty much, yeah. Like, unleash Bob, get him. <laughs> like, and uh, and what happens is uh, Ares got some just dessert. <laughs> he did, yo, because he because Noel looks at him and he was like, "I know you. I've seen that motherfucker. I've before. seen you." Because <laughs> like, it's like he read his mind. He was like, "Oh, by the way, wow." And like then it was, it. like it was nothing. Said, "I am the void." That shit. Yeah. That wow, dude. I was like, "Damn, man!" Just took his shit and ripped him in two. Which, but which, if anybody does not know, that is uh, from the Siege storyline. Yeah. Uh, where, yeah, the uh, Dark Rain, mm-hmm. Dark Rain. Yep. Uh, where, where Ares basically got ripped in two by the Sentry. Where you yep. basically saw the gut. It's 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 a classic frame that everybody. If, if you're a comic book fan and like you on the internet, you have seen these panels. You've before. seen that. Yeah. It was like th- that was that was kind of like the only time that I've seen like in Marvel where there was gore. Mm. A lot of blood all over the place. Because yeah. DC is usually known more for that. Right. You know, DC kind of has a handle on gore. Like yeah. when it happened in Marvel, everybody was like, "Whoa, that don't happen a lot." Hold no, that guts. <laughs> Those are intestines. Crazy. It was crazy sauce, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it and it gets like a it gets a little weirder after that after that situation yeah. happens. Also, like then, like after that happens, you also see. Uh, Captain America, Miss Marvel, uh, Luke Cage, like the whole crew who's like on the front lines to take down Noel mm-hmm. get consumed by the symbiote. And like seeing that happens, it really made me think about like like the, the scroll invasion. It really made me think about the House of Vim a little bit, like how like things are just like, okay, well, I'm just going to shove all you guys off the table. We already said Thor's not going to be here. So like that means it right. got a little bit of civil war inside of it too. So like they're just tossing like all these characters that we can't use for this story, and like they're they're doing like an entire event out of this. Like, right? To to 
to sidetrack from the story just a little bit, like you had like the, the Atlas attacks, you got the Union, you got more Venom, you got the Immortal Hulk being involved in this, Namor, yep. Black Black Cat, and uh, the symbiote Spider-Man, all all before we get issue number two. And like in the last panel. In minutes. Yeah. Like, which was basically where you saw frame by frame. It seemed like only a matter of minutes. Which made it such a fast read because of that, exactly. Yeah, and, and most of you can't see this when it comes to uh, like yeah. the audio version, but like then the whole planet gets engulfed by the symbiotes themselves. It's like the whole planet is consumed by symbiotes. So like to have like all those different titles and to have like all the heroes that we know that could possibly stop a situation like this, even Doctor Strange and Storm could not stand up to this dude. Oh. And, so that, and they figured just because it was a symbiote that they could treat it the same as they, they've done with Venom and Carnage. And yeah, the yeah. It was like, oh, just strike some lightning on it. You good? It yeah, right. like, you know, yeah. Put some seasoning on that. You, you know, it'll taste good if you put some more salt on it. There. there you go. And uh, you know, <laughs> Professor X and his dumb ass, because I swear, like, you know, he, oh, he, he tends to have the dumbest ideas known to man. He's just sitting... It, Literally did not show any type of backup in order to form for Storm because, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, he just left her in the sky. She's sitting there throwing lightning bolts and she's, and, and you got everybody basically clouding in fear. Yeah. Iron Man's like sitting in like some telephone booth somewhere. Yeah. Hey, Storm, we got train. you, buddy. Like, don't worry. Like, we got backup coming for you. It was like, yo, is backup coming? It, like, Storm's like, is backup coming? Iron Man's like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> 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 and Eddie Brock is going rogue right now. Like, yeah. er everybody is submerged in symbiosis. And you got like a big hand coming right towards your storm. Like I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. yeah. And then that's that's pretty much it. That's for, like, that was it. That was that was yeah. done. Yeah. Miss Monroe took her final exit right then and there. Dude, I was pissed about that to be honest. With you. Like, because, I was like, like that was too quick. That's in a level omega level mutant. That like, that the thing right there. Yeah. Like, I'm like. I'm like, whoa, and then I'm like, okay, all right, I get it. I know we've been plotting on this because he hasn't he hasn't had a necessary fight. He's been sending avatars to Earth and everything like that, but it hasn't necessarily been him. So, you know, his avatars have gotten beaten. I remember Miles Morales, like, clocking the shit out of Noel. right. Noel's avatar. This is not Noel. But, you know, to see an Omega-level mutant getting beaten quite quickly, was a little disturbing. I was upset, <laughs> to say the least. I yeah. was, I was upset. Like, I the century thing was like, yeah, he deserved that shit. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't like, I don't like Bob. I, do, I was like, Bob can kiss my ass. So like, that didn't bother me too much. Uh, but but seeing Storm get handled with a hand, mind you, did not like that. Did not like yeah. that at all. Yeah, that. I don't know where to go from there. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why I gotta ask. Like, what, what's your main consensus? Like overall, when it comes to this, uh, this comic, like, is it is it gonna keep reading the rest of them? I mean, I'm pretty sure that goes on. Oh, same absolutely. Career. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm definitely going to read the rest of them because I've been I've been like tragically waiting for this character. <laughs> this dude said tragically. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I've I've definitely been waiting to see exactly like his arrival for this long because I, I you know I was I was just consumed with the character because I've always been like kind of like more so uh impacted by Marvel's cosmic universe rather right. than their Earth's mightiest heroes type. I know folks like that yeah 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 I'm 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 big on you know on that side of the spectrum so to have a character like Noel which intertwine you know with a with a symbiote alien character that's basically deriving on earth through eddie brock and everything like that but you but you that, that connection for it to be cosmic and yet there's like a dark angle to it that's what drew me in that's right up your alley yeah oh absolutely and, and the fact that they, that they got rid of all the foot soldiers that the earth mightiest heroes like right yeah. in the right in the first issue that that's even more up your alley yeah it's like yeah. It's like basically it just told you that Earth's Mightiest Heroes are trash. Trash. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah, uh, like, because you saw how quick that shit happened. It was like a snap, dude. Yeah. Like literally, he he stood up. So like y'all ain't shit, and they were not. Yeah, that's why when I look at the MCU, and I was like, no, no, Thor, the cosmic guy, was on your side. Imagine <laughs> one of those cosmic guys on their side. You're not living through this. No. Uh, I would recommend this to people. I would. I would suggest people to read this. I would. Uh, 
if I was if I was still a part of the whole Marvel thing right now, like I would probably like be all about this event. I do mm-hmm. want to hear from everyone's perspective because I heard like the stories about Ares getting his revenge. So like you know the fans are getting hyped about it. I can see myself getting hyped about this too. Yeah, uh, it was it was a good story. Like I'm not a big Dunny Case guy, but that was good. Yeah, see, like I w- I would definitely tell everybody to like look read up the backstories. You you would, the most recent uh, there was a there was another Venom series, there was another Ultimate Spider Man series, and there was an Absolute Carnage series that came out all within this t- time of uh, time of frame this year right before leading to this like even if you want to start there but if you want to go beyond that you'd have to start from his inception and just basically see where he's been like kind of like like picking into like to get into this universe so it's been like a really big big build up of what you're saying yeah it, 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 like i said it's like a six-year build up oh my God. See, that, that's the shell of my and, comic books and, build up like that man yeah it's like like six years and he hasn't fought anybody you know what i'm saying like like you, you would see like excerpts in certain comics of him like talking to Venom or talking to another symbiote or talking to Carnage uh, in the in a ways of through their mind like telepathically like almost in cognizance that they are there. Yeah, I, I love what you're saying. Like I got like tons of questions to ask and follow up. That we're gonna take a break. We're gonna come right back and we're gonna finish up this and talk about Flashpoint. All right, guys, we're back. And uh, I got to say, thinking about this, thinking about uh, Kate's and him having having not only uh, Storm get taken down, having Bob get ripped in half and have Dr. Strange pretty much be not even a thought when it comes to Noel, what do you think he's building up for? Uh, you know what? It's one of those, like, deep-scale events. But the thing is, there's got to be somebody in the wings that has to play more of a bigger part as far as on the protagonist side. Right. Now, right out the gate, like when we talked about the entrance into the story, his arrival into Earth started with Celestials, his most formidable foes. So it was like, okay, how does this happen? Now, if anybody had read some of the back back issues before this comic even happened, you realize that uh, his son, Eddie Rock's son, has a manipulated codex inside of him from the symbiotes. And that's, that's, how, yeah. So he, that's kind of why he got locked away. And there was a couple people after it. One being the alternate universe, uh, Mr. Fantastic, the maker. The, the crazy one? The crazy one. <laughs> yeah. He, so he, he was like doing some experiments and everything. And he was like, yeah, you know, I'm not really interested in any of this stuff here. <laughs> I'm interested in him. Right. <laughs> you know, because he's got something that I want. And then basically it started the whole backstory of the codex that's within each of the symbiotes and kind of like, um, what is it? Kind of like it, if you think of Nova, you know, if, if all of them die, one right. gets, one gets all the powers. Yeah. Yeah. So like with each one that dies, everybody gets a little bit stronger. Gets a little bit stronger. That's kind of what, what we read like in the, in the next comic book too. In the flash yeah. One, like, yeah. Yeah, so like it, it's kind of like in that there's a codex within all the symbiotes. So it's like when if they if they're all merged into one sentient being, then you have like a more fit, formidable foe. That's 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 part why no one wants the other Brock kid. That's yeah. right, because yeah, because at the end of basically that that book, you know, as short as it was, yeah. it's basically you know, no ripping the symbiote from Eddie Brock, throwing a butt naked off of a bridge, <laughs> and then. <laughs> and then basically like I, I was like yeah i said brock yeah <laughs> I didn't you i mean you're strong you took on one of my like, demons but yeah i don't yeah, like i don't want you so here just go butt naked in the hall just throw Woo. you down and it's like then i'll go after your kid but you know right now he doesn't know where he's at this is gonna, this is gonna that, be cool that's what we're gonna get this is gonna be a cool ride. Like I'm not gonna yeah. watch it. This is gonna be a, like I, I feel a lot of marvel in this and i've been reading marvel since early 90s mm-hmm. this, this has a lot of this has a lot of marvel inside of it it feels like a lot of the events that i read from marvel in the past like three decades and uh it's cool to see like they still got that same template down for this i, I hope it doesn't get like bogged down i hope like you know the changes that happens actually stay happen i heard someone died already inside this series yeah yeah well yeah i guess yeah i guess bob yeah, yeah, yeah. i guess bob, bob is done <laughs> Really? I guess I was going for it. He, he turned so into he turned into Bishop from Alien, where he got rifted. Come on, you're right. 
Yeah, that was silly of me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Storm, you might as well say you might as well say Storm and and Bob uh pretty much and we're talking about Central, kinda, but kinda kinda yeah. Donzo, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're talking about two extremely powerful characters already like out of the picture. Uh, yeah. So uh, so so who? So it's like is Thor gonna arrive? You know, like is and, and the thing is if Trump Thor arrives, Yeah, like if Thor arrives, man, he he took out an Omega level mutant with already the power of it, electricity. I mean, I get it. He's the god of thunder. He might be a little bit stronger, but how easy does it? It's, it's yeah. Thor. Calm down. Yeah. 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 I'm really yeah. more. I'm really more excited about this. This immortal Hulk. See how that that plays out in the King of Black series. But it's, it's only right. issue one. So yeah. And the thing is, even Immortal Hulk was still sit, sitting over there getting consumed and everything like that. So you know, so it was like, I don't even know. Yeah, it's interesting to see, man. Uh, the next book is going to be Tell from the Dark Multiverse, Flashpoint, written by Brian Hitch, Andrew Curie, and Scott Hannon on inks. Hitch drew and wrote this. Good God's Hitch. Most, most, to me personally, most artists are not the best writers, but I That's really... True. You notice that too, then, huh? That's true. Like, uh, I really got into the story. That, really got, no, really no. The, the perspective, like, because for one, it, there's a lot of people that'll probably say, it, you shouldn't even touch Flashpoint. Like you should. That's a story that you should like leave alone. Mm -hmm. Don't fuck with it <laughs> at all. Like don't you dare mess with anything about that eclipsable climactic storyline. You know. But but in in context, if you want to draw it from a different perspective, <laughs> I'm all in. I'm all in. Yeah. You know? Because it, it because it starts from. The point of view of Reverse Flash from Thawne. Like so, it, I, it, it, it did. Yeah, it did. Like it, you got to see him doing his whole running thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So pretty much, if, if if anybody remembers Flashpoint, all this chaos that you saw of Flashpoint derived from from Thawne. You know, like he started this shit. That was the reason that Barry went back there and like kind of like tried to recruit everybody in order to get things right with Thomas Wayne, uh, Cyborg, skinny-ass Superman. Yeah, skinny-ass yeah. Superman. Yes, yeah, no no Dick Gregory for him, man. He left that <laughs> Bahamian diet right at the house. Um, <laughs> the battle between Wonder Woman and Aquaman is still is still going on. Atlantis and... But, but not as prevalent as it was in the original. Not it was. Yeah. Exactly. In this book, it was not. It was pretty much like... That was like the side story that was like benefacting this whole thing. Yeah. And like Thaw was like Thaw was in the White House because he took over like the presidency after he uh after he killed Barry. Yeah. And uh he pretty much like he was asked like, hey, uh you've been here for a week. I know like like you know the, the Atlanteans and the Amazonians still like doing their thing. Are you gonna take care of their problems? Yeah. Like, hey man, uh I got time. They're not gonna do this shit while I'm here. So like don't even worry your little head. So yeah. The big thing about this is that like necessarily you don't like to read a lot of stories based on ego. Right. And it this is this is this is Thawne's point of view throughout this whole thing, like basically telling Thomas Wayne or telling the president, be like, I control everything. Right. I could, I could kill you before you breathe, make you come back to life, and I could kill you again, like that type of shit. And that's what like, he's telling us. He, he's telling us like 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 verbally and like subconsciously with the fucking thought bubbles. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, that's it, that's where you see like his. You're seeing how his ego works. He, he kind of like realizes, even though he's always had this obsession with Barry, that he wanted to be him in the end. Right. And, and in this storyline, it's like, okay, Barry's defeated. Let me go run shit. And while I'm running shit, I'm just going to talk shit. <laughs> and you know what? If I'm going to be Barry, I need a bad guy. Hey, why don't I just keep Batman, like, you know, old Batman alive? Man, yeah. that, that was sick. <laughs> I was like, it was because he's actually like telling him, beg, was, beg, beg me for it, your kid. Yeah, it's like it, you, you know, I could bring your your wife and your son back to exactly who they were. You would bring them back. He was like, you would do that for me. He was like, no. no. <laughs> it ran off. It just dipped. I'm like, dude, <laughs> like that's that's bogus, man. Why would you do that to him? I was like, oh man. And the, and the thing is, like, it was like. Because you never, well, I, I guess you're looking at it from Batman's point of view because you you saw a sense of vulnerability in a Wayne character, and it was like he was like you would. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, 
that's kind of how you approached it. <laughs> Yeah. Lift getting all, all dry and shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. But when he when he dips off on him, it causes that Batman like rage. Yeah, he's like this motherfucker just fuck with me. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> wow. Right. So like you, you, certain turns of events start to happen um, where you come to come to find out that Cyborg is now a little bit different. Yeah, he is not who he was. Uh, he, he was turned into atoms by Eobard. So yeah. It almost looked like Ultron and and how the in, a, in a way with that, that face yeah, like that like, we had. What yeah, it's like homeboy, man. Look at this. The joke, the joke that Thomas made was hilarious. So like, so like, uh, what do I call you now? Because I can't call you Cyborg anymore. Because you're not. Should I call like, you like, Robot like, Man? Like, yeah, because <laughs> you're like Doom Patrol. <laughs> there's no Cyborg is half human. You are no longer human. So no more and, that. It, and then they have. They they have basically the calling card in order for all the so so Thawn has basically gone around and just like basically caused havoc throughout this entire story. Wreaking it uh, even now. Even so with Atlantis pretty much stopped the war with he basically told the president, he was like, yo, is that kind of like, yo, is that uh, Atlantis, Themyscira war still going on? All right, I'll be, all right, I'll be right back. <laughs> while, while, he, while he puts, he just runs off and just shoves the Triton right up in Aquaman. Just yeah. just puts it right in there like it was nothing. Bunch of dead Atlanteans at his feet, <laughs> stabs Aquaman, and goes to approach Wonder Woman, and she's ready to go, and is like, hey, just letting you know, I could do this at any time that I want. I'm just going to place this dude at your feet and I'm going to run off. And I won't be merciful. No. Yeah. And and she she kind of stands packed because of, you know, like a couple pages go by and you're like, oh, okay, she just took that. Like, that's not, that's not a Wonder Woman I know. She just... Wonder, Wonder Woman is probably like the most unmerciful character in the DC yeah. universe. Like, she you, will kill you. If you give her a dick slap, she will not appreciate that. And and you see later on, like, after, after Skin and Superman shows up and, like, start fighting fighting Thawne and going at it, that Wonder Woman shows up and she brought a fucking squad with her, dude. Brought the old guys with her. I saw Big Barters uh, coming in the wings. I was dude. like, wow. Like Ocean Master, like joined them yeah. too? Like what yeah. the hell? Well, well, in order for sides to agree in battle, they have to know that the foe that's against the both of them is bigger than they yeah, are. Yeah, pretty much the enemy of my enemy, yeah. So let me just like, I, Let's just all collaborate on this. <laughs> That's it. Collaborate and listen. Yeah. Like, 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 please, because like it was like, okay, we've always had this theory in our heads of Superman battling Flash. Right. Like, he's always had like that was his right hand man. I'm just like, you know, I'll race you every once in a while. That's kind of how their little but, dynamic is, yeah. But have we ever really seen a battle with Superman and 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 reverse flash on paper before i don't remember one neither can i like i'm yeah. trying to i i can't take it for anything i yeah I, I didn't i couldn't remember one if you if you told me so the thing is it was like this was kind of like this was cool because this has never happened before you know fl reverse fl uh, thawne has always been barry's ar arch enemy yeah but yet with barry out of the way somebody somebody Probably just as strong, and of course, Cyborg. I guess kept him in an incubator to get this dude full speed. Because when he jumped out the gate and gave him that one hit of quitter on that rock, it was like, "Oh, man, I didn't see that." He he said it. He was like, "Man, I didn't see that coming." I think I gotta get ready. <laughs> so Superman proceeds to like wax his ass a little bit to the point where it was a setup. Because, yeah, because Cyborg and, and Thomas Wayne's Batman were basically waiting in the wings the, with their Superman. And what do we know from Thomas Wayne other than than Bruce is that Thomas Wayne always had bullets some, on him. And he's he always had, got a gun. He's got but matter of fact, he didn't just have a gun. He had a Gatling gun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he has no honor either about like this Thomas Wayne Batman. No honor whatsoever. Oh, and when Cyborg proceeded to intervene because they didn't want him dead. Mm hmm. Cyborg gets basically some type of electronic bolt uh, device to the neck. They're like, no, I'm going to finish the job. Realizes he only has a few bullets left. Superman stops the bullet because Superman has to do what Superman does. 
but then he gets the bullet, like but from, then, but from then, Thomas. Yep, and then and then what do we see from there after that happens? All this goodness just goes to shit because Thomas Wayne pulled out another gat and blasts Superman in the head. I, I guess this had to be a Kryptonian bullet because there was no way. Yeah, you you see the green. On I saw the, side the green. Gun, I saw the yeah. green shine in it and everything. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, ain't this about a bitch? <laughs> All right, so. So so then we, we basically proceed from there uh, where – because at that point where Thawne thought that he was defeated, it was pretty much like Thawne was like, oh, he was like, I get it now. But then when Superman got blasted away, he was like, no, this is the plan. Mm. <laughs> it was like – Bring me back my son. Like, I don't, yeah. give, I don't give a damn about this stupid-ass Superman. Cyborg can kiss my ass. I want yeah. my son back. Period. He saw the light for two seconds. Yep. And then it was it was curtains. Give By the kid. time Wonder Woman and the rest of the old gods and the, and half of Atlantis basically showed up, Thawne was gone. <laughs> like you hear that you you hear that boom, and then like okay, it's about yeah. to go down. Barda shows up, Light Tray, Mister Miracle, like they're all there. Orion, the I whole didn't, the I whole didn't expect that at all. I was like, where did these cats come from? No. And and uh, it only gets weirder after that. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> then uh, then it sets up like, you know, they're going to be a sequel because then he has like a whole, Dawn shows up with a whole new crew, a new Black Lightning, a new Green Lantern, Superman, and they're all working for him. Yeah, it's like uh, what, what people don't necessarily know, uh, what, well, people, people do know, with, with Flashpoint, you know, there's going to be alternative timelines. And yeah. e- even so, like, if if... Thorn feels the need that he has to construct something. He can do it very quickly. He, he, made, he bragged about it the entire issue. You know? Yep. He was like, I can show up with a team and, you know, just knock this out the park. You know, regardless, he, I think at that moment, he realized that he can't do it himself. So if I have to pull out some people out here to basically be expendable in order for me to achieve the goal, cool. So, so what you're trying to say, like, in a way, he became his own his own superhero of his own making. Yeah. He, he created his own Justice League at the end. Yeah, he made with no Batman. No uh, Batman. That, uh, guy, the, that guy is too much I, trouble. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think he knew better from there. He was like, <laughs> the, last time, the last time I made fun of this dude, he started clapping like crazy, and I almost got shot. I would, I would love to hear him like tell that story in passing. Like, so why don't you like Batman? Like, what's wrong with Batman? Oh, you know, yeah, this is a fun story. Uh, this dude, uh, I, I fucked with him a little bit, so I'll bring back his kid. I wasn't. And uh, he sicked a Superman at me, and then yeah. he killed that Superman. Then he threatened me to bring his son back again. The yeah. dude that he sent to kill me, he killed. <laughs> <laughs> and then he still tried to kill me. I like, like So... I, I'm not fucking with that. So yeah, that's some toxic shit. Right <laughs> like so no Batman, Bruce, Thomas, the Signal, no, none no. of them Robins. <laughs> <laughs> they can stay off in Gotham doing their own little thing. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done like with the, the hell with Gotham. I'm gonna torch that place <laughs> when I get back. It was a good story. It's a, it, it was a good laugh. Like it was, uh, it was crazy as hell. Brian Hitch created like a crazy, crazy story. Uh, yeah, was, uh, we're, we're in issue one. <laughs> <you're> right. <laughs> Like how fucking how chaotic could this get? Where can you go after this? Exactly. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna be down to get it, get some more issues of that when that comes out. These dark multiverse stories are are nuts, man. They are. They I, are. What do you think of those stories? Like, I I think they're um they're DC's answer like that they can have some edge that Marvel has and like get those Marvel fans to read some DC comic books. What do you think of this? Well, because I feel like DC is always basically. I think they they've conquered how to create alternative realities. They they've done it for years. Marvel you know? has not. Marvel Marvel hasn't. No, not at all. It, because like Flash was pretty much the, the standpoint as mm-hmm. far as creating alternate alternative realities. And then with the creation of the Dark Multiverse and having all like Dark Knight's Metal was probably the, like the Batman who laughs, yeah. Yeah, like that whole series was a couple couple years back Dark Knight's yeah. Metal. Yeah. So that whole series probably like changed the game going forth as far as introduction of characters, brand new alternative universe, utilizing Batman to its highest capabilities, and basically drawing in new fans. 
Yeah, check, check, and check. It also gives you the ability to rewrite a story however you see fit and make it make sense because, like, hey, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah, and it, you had these introductions to all these characters. You had Batman who laughs. You had the Dawn, was it the Dawnbringer? Yeah. Um, was it, uh, what was it, Red Death? Red, oh, God, Red Death. Red Death. That's Met, Metal mentioned. Machine, which was uh, like the, the cyborg uh, collab type deal. Drown. Oh, the, 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 I almost called him the drowned god, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she, scared, she scared the shit out of me, period. And, and the thing is, to see Batman caught in that image from every single character, and it was like, oh, but but then they flipped it after Dark Knight's Metal uh, ended. They gave you Batman Who Laughs. They gave you that storyline, put mm-hmm. that away. Then gave you the tales of the dark multiverse, and it was, and, and even so, they gave you the terrifics. Where the terrifics basically were on these wacky ass journeys going into the dark multiverse. Which is was that the, what that was? Yeah, the the um, what was it? Mister Terrific found a hole to get into the dark multiverse, and they basically just go on adventures the entire time. Uh, it was it was him, Metamorto, uh, Plastic him, Man, him, Metamorto, um, Phantom Girl, and Phantom Girl, and and and, and Plastic Man. Yeah, I think it, Tom, it, Tom Strong shows up later on. Yeah, it, it's uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas in comic form. No way! It's all that is. That's cool. That sounds like a fun trip. It's cool shit because you got somebody that's uh, impeccably smart, smart. Uh, somebody who is a chameleon, another person that's like wacky as fuck. Because Plastic Man is <laughs> like he has Plastic no Man chill. Is a, he is a goofball. He and, has zero chill. <laughs> but I, th- I think that's great because yeah. that dynamic of the Terrifics entering the dark multiverse is just like is it, it's it's a fun story. It, like it was, you need some of those. It was obviously like, like a play on the challenge of the unknown. But like yeah, yeah. I, I hear you absolutely. Yeah, you need those type of wacky ass shits to like Agreed. set the mood and everything like that. Sometimes we don't have to be so damn serious. And and having terrific like the like Michael Holt of all people like running this little group like the guy like you know who doesn't really like being a leader, no. uh, but but he has like all the smarts to be the leader. Like it's it's interesting to see. Like I I still haven't caught on to this. Maybe um, I'm reading Hawkman right now. I'm trying to read the entire Rebirth until Future mm-hmm. State. Like I knew, I knew Future State was coming. It was called Five G before, but then the cell phones took over, so they had to change that name. But uh, Future State, I'm all for it. I, I don't know about you, but I got to read Terrifics before I get to that point, and it's not any reading list because I get they're not doing anything. I think is I'm I'm glad that DC finally got like to hang on on doing something as far as like just wiping the slate clean. You can keep your your regular characters, bring in some new ones, and just. Go like like don't don't listen to to the to the the loud noises and no. shit and just go exactly. just go do like, it just go do it because I that I mean aside from like what we talked about with alternate alternative universes with uh with Marvel that's something that Marvel like did early they put in those young characters and everything yeah. like that and kind of was like fuck what everybody says we're just gonna put it out there so they gave you the Kate Bishop they gave you Miss Marvel they gave you they gave you no, Miles Morales they Miles gave you Morales. Yeah, they, yeah. Uh, Yep, young, they, young young Cyclops from what uh, what was happening before with Bendis. They gave you all yep. those things. Yeah. They gave you the new mutants where they gave you like magic and everything. They gave mm-hmm. you those, those young new characters and they were just like the hell with what everybody's saying. I'm we're just gonna do it. So I'm glad DC like pulled the trigger and was like, Yeah, yeah, we're doing it. it, it I honestly think Future State is what Kingdom Come should have like should have been after Kingdom Come came out. Yeah. Period. Like I know, like I'm, I know I'm from that area era. I know, like I'm big and like to Mark Wade and big in Alex Ross. Like I named my kid after Alex Ross. So like I get it. I, I, I'm very biased when it comes to this. But like Kingdom Come to me was the Bible because it, it showed those characters aged and growing and showed those flaws mm-hmm. and showed like that their kids do not respect their ideologues. But yeah. I honestly don't think the world was ready to see that. And I think Future State is like what we need to progress that along because we may see John Kent kill people. Yeah. We, we may see Damian Wayne like going fucking psycho. Like his dad never fucking did. Like he has a lot of his grandpa inside of him too. This new Titans crew, like what the hell is Nightwing doing? He's wearing tactical fucking armor? What yeah. the shit? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's totally opposite to what they were trying to accomplish with Young Justice. Agreed. Totally opposite. And and the thing is, it's more the better. And the thing is, I love Young Justice. Agreed. You know, so it's like, okay, take the more serious turn. Give it, put everybody in retirement, 
right? Use, use them in mentor states, kind of yeah. like, kind of like how in Batman Beyond had Bruce just basically right in the earpiece, yeah, right in the earpiece, just guiding, guiding them away. You know what I'm saying? Just Terry McGinnis just doing his thing, <laughs> and just go. You know what I'm saying? I've I've been through. Been through the ringer, so a lot of these newer readers have to like basically like get in here. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm you know my kid is tired of me telling them about certain characters. But like, I want my own fucking. I want to learn together. Let's learn. Yeah. Let's learn something together. Yeah, let's. <laughs> I want my own fucking superhero. What is that? <laughs> Fuck Clark. It's like, yeah. uh, all right, all right, all right. Easy, easy, easy <laughs> another kid, dollar back. <laughs> But yeah, it was fun. Like this is a fun run. The Dark Martyrverse was fun. This uh, this this King of Black man, you uh, you got me. You got me with the story. Only because it's it, it's it's just dark. So like I, we haven't actually seen, you know, <laughs> his full capability. Marvel's not the best for the events, but yeah, <laughs> they're not. I'm just they're saying. not. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> they're not. So, uh, Civil not War. Civil man. War did not end well. Civil War two. Did not end well. Secret Wars <laughs> did not end well. Axis did not end well. Hmm. Yeah. No. They're not good with events. Yeah. So, like, you know, for to have one singular character basically trying to just like run the show, and I, I want to see how it goes because I don't want to. I don't want to see uh, six years of build up for a character to get. I don't want him to get defeated. Yeah. Like, I don't want. I don't want him murked. Like that should be out of the question. He has to carry on the storyline. You can put some DC in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you cannot retcon this man. Sprink, sprinkle, sprinkle a little DC on this character, yeah. please. Yeah, you do not retcon. They'd be like, "Oh, he got killed." We're like, "Okay, well, later on, there was it was actually another era." No, showed up King of Black. Like, no, 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 <laughs> no we don't want that. <laughs> no, that's old. That's old story. That's old storytelling. We need something new. Yep. We need something fresh. Like, like we're we're not. We, we're not like Neanderthals. We we're hip to the game. <laughs> We've been reading this for for a good while now. You don't have to keep playing those stupid gimmicks with us anymore. Yep. All right. Well, uh, I think that's it, man. Where, where can people find you, James? Uh, yeah, you can see me, Grandmaster Facts on IG, Grandmaster Facts on Twitter. You can uh, check out the Facts Project every Friday on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, uh, iHeartRadio, and uh, the Party Nerds Podcast every Tuesday. I literally thought you were going to name every podcast that no. ever exists. I thought you were going to rattle. I thought you had a long list. You're just going to rattle them all out. No. No. <laughs> There's more. I just didn't. <laughs> well, this has been Dean. You guys know where to find me. Uh, I hope you guys are having a good weekend. Uh, we uh, we recently had like a um, another another person who is black being killed by a cop, and I know that's hard for a lot of folks out there. I'm sorry you guys had to keep going through that. I'm sorry that it, it seems like it's a norm. We, we paint pictures, we post memorials, we, uh, we get sad and we get confined to where we are for a while. I'm, I'm sorry that everyone has to go through that. Know that uh, FGO is a place that people can come and talk about these certain things and not feel persecuted and judge for feeling sad when someone who looks like them is killed just for being themselves. That is not right. It is not what we stand for. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, Try to focus on the positive while respecting what happened. It's called escapism because, like, you're escaping from something that, that's bothering you. That's, like, use escapism for what it is. Like, can come and hang out with us because that's, you know, that's what you need to do. Hang out. Have some fun. Escape from that shit for a little bit. But, you know, you got to respect what, what happened and understand. So, we're here for you. Definitely. Good work. So, so, sorry that I go on like that, but I, I'm ah, trying to – I'm trying to – <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying to be nice to myself and be nice to uh, – to the world because i think we need it even if uh a lot of people don't want to listen to it so absolutely man ain't nothing wrong with keeping your chakra in check right on here here uh this has been d afternoon nerd talk james thanks for being on man appreciate you bro until next time all right